I will have the pleasure of spending with you another hour talking about preparing for the unexpected, which is, of course, the catchy title of talking about uh, how we can prepare real-time campaigns and how they can be used on a more structured level. So uh, when I say real-time campaigns, is there anything which comes to your mind already uh, associated with it, whether it's something which you would qualify as a real-time campaign or some kind uh, of a definition? You can write in chat, you know, just so we can see what do you think about it. Anyone? No? Come on, unless you're typing a long answer. In the meantime, I'll try to campaign something. Boost, change. That is a campaign, exactly. So, but there is also a real time campaign in it. Deborah, something related to the community. Making noise, but okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you can right now see my slides, hopefully, if you can just confirm that you can see my slides. Awesome. So that's really interesting uh, what you're saying here. And before me, we will jump into what can be, what we can then find as a campaign and then basically how a campaign can be different from a real-time campaign. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, where is my presentation? Here. So today, uh, <clears throat> I run the organization called Outriders and we focus on explaining the world through uh, the best stories. And we either create our the stories our, on our own on our uh, own platform called outright.rs, where we use different interactive forms to um, create interactive reporting. Uh, we also release uh, a magazine sent via email every Friday to over 31,000 subscribers. But here you can see those little GIFs because we also specialize, yeah, might be specialized. We also do a lot of campaigns in order either to promote our stories or to promote different causes or so. And then when I was talking to the organizers, we basically ran into this idea that, you know, it would be interesting to talk to you about real-time campaigns. But also we have a project called Mixer, which, which, is, uh, the, which is a project through which we share our knowledge and we organize different workshops. And Mixer is a platform, which is a knowledge sharing platform for journalists and storytellers. So uh, there is also a campaign workshop there, uh, so you can follow it later on. And just so you know, this presentation is going to be shared with you after this presentation. Uh, so don't worry, nothing will escape you. Uh, some housekeeping rules from my side. If you have any questions, just please ask them in chat. Uh, one little thing is that uh, when I'm presenting, I'm actually not looking uh, exactly here to uh, into the event uh, tab because I have to look at the other uh, at the other tab where, where my presentation where my presentation is. So if just if you ask a question. Don't think I'm an asshole who doesn't reply to it. It just, it may be, it, I'm coming back and forth every couple of minutes or so. And if I get really into a topic or explaining something, I may even forget about uh, going back here. But it's important that you drop your question here because I'll be, Francesco, you want to interrupt me? No, I just wanted to say that if the floor for you mm -hmm. is open all the time for questions, mm -hmm. I can let you know if people are asking questions. That, that, that's amazing. Just, just so you know, just. Just so you know that simply I have to be in a different tab so no one gets like, oh, you know, Jakub is not ignoring my question, you know. Okay, I will try it's... not to interrupt you in this case. <laughs> no, you can just, no, no, it's just, just, just a little bit of housekeeping, you it's know, good. from my own, from my own set because I know it happens at some point or later on. So, uh, okay, uh, um, this is me. Um, I, I will take you for our campaign. So at this stage you can, Trust me that we have done some campaigns uh, in order to either crowdfund money, in order to promote stories, in order to get uh, people um, get together around a certain cause. Uh, we have also done, most of our campaigns were successful, some were unsuccessful. So uh, that gives me this opportunity of sharing not only what works, but also what doesn't and what basic lessons we have taken from it. So, uh, well, real-time campaigns. Now, just going back before we get, get into some examples, someone's uh, just looking at your answers here. 
Channeling reactions in possible actions, Deborah said. That's actually a very interesting way of putting campaigns. Basically, campaign is like, let's say, every organization, uh, like here, we have goals, which we, which we are trying to achieve. This is either uh, established through the mission of the organization or through the strategy, the current strategy of the organization. And we, let's say, say like alternatives ones that were to be ex explained by the best studies. Nice, but at the same time, every mission sounds a little bit bullshitty. So campaigns actually help us, not only us and our traders, but those who do campaigns, achieve certain goals in a rather shorter amount of time, let's put it this way. Because I think what is the biggest plus for me in doing any sort, sort of campaigns, that they actually have a meaningful end. So it's not something, you know, that we embark on a three-year-long mission and let's say it's very hard or sometimes unclear sometimes to see the progress or a change we are doing successful campaign starts with properly understanding what we are trying to achieve from it and uh, setting a goal and that goes for every sort of campaign whether it's a longer campaign or whether it's a real-time campaign now, when it comes to campaigns, you know, they have a very clearly defined goal. It's to create something, to gather people around something, to crowdfund a certain amount of money in order to achieve something or so or so. So we have our big strategy as organizations, and then we have this little chunk of it, which we try to enable, which we try to do through a campaign process. Now, what is also different campaigns are very often associated with let's say promotion, PR, advertising or so, stuff like this. Now this is okay approach, but then on the other hand, maybe there are people here uh, who work in more campaign driven NGOs for whom let's say campaigning is uh, just a way to go. So it's not something rare what you do. The other problem, maybe not the other thing, the other issue with campaigns is that, uh, uh, hey Magda, uh, we're video bombing already. Uh, okay, so um, um, what I wanted to say. So the campaigns are also sometimes associated, you know, with something which is very um, hard to do, something what we are afraid to do because, well, since campaigns have a very clearly defined goal, it also means that it's very we can very clearly see whether that goal has been achieved or it wasn't. And that basically defines whether this was successful or not. I personally like this zero-one approach because it allows us, um, as I said, to properly understand uh, how we are doing. It's also different from, let's say, organic growth because, you know, another campaign always has a plan, the proper campaign has a, has a plan, it's plan in advance, uh, different moments of the campaign are uh, done, different elements of the campaign, different promotional tools. So let's say when we've had our big crowdfunding campaign, which basically established us as an organization, uh, and now I'm gonna switch uh, my presentation to a different slide, hold on here, share, and. Uh, Sharing those Google and open. Okay, wait, this works differently, so I have to just change the tab. Show you like this, share, and you should buy, you should see just so you basically see. So that is that is the campaign, that, that is one of the first campaigns we have done. That is the campaign which has seeded us as the organization. Uh, 639 people donated to us, uh, over 80,000 so zloty, which is around. 20,000 euros, more or less, right now. Um, so it's not much technically, but it was one of the first campaigns for a journalistic project here in Poland. Uh, at, at that moment, it was the biggest. Right now, uh, the campaigns which are done here for media publications, well, they attract even more money, even more people, which is great because it shows how the field is developing. But this campaign, we have spent two months preparing it, just two months, just planning day by day. It lasted 40 days. It, has a, it had a clear goal of uh, collecting a certain amount of money. It had a supportive goals, which were how many people actually support us, for which goals, how many people we reach, uh, and so on and so on. 
it also had a lot of elements. There were influencers uh, who were supporting it in, in different moments. The campaign had three phases. Uh, influencers, there was around 16 of them who were supporting it. What else was there? Uh, two movies, uh, three different types of uh, three different types of visuals. Uh, a lot of messaging, a lot of fuck ups on the way when it comes to some things which work, some some some, some things which didn't work. For example, back then collecting money from mobile platforms was really bad. And we have one of our biggest push during this campaign attracted 70% of the mobile traffic, uh, which basically didn't convert to any, at least not immediately, but immediately didn't convert to almost zero uh, donations, which well, that was a very, very bad night uh, because it was one of, I think it was our biggest major push and we simply didn't took into the consideration how mobile payment uh, is important to have it done properly. Well, uh, the good thing is back then none of the platforms we could have used to support, um, to create this campaign had a proper mo mobile payment system and so on and so on. So now why I'm saying this, that you know, this is so well prepared and so on, because today we are going to talk about real-time campaigns which are frankly associated with absolute chaos. I'm again switching my presentation. And many people, when they think about real-time campaigns, they, you know, first of all, we have a real-time there, which means that there is something happening almost immediately when something else has happened, you know, or we just basically roll out the campaign on the spot. Um, and the problem with it is that, well, some people try it, uh, and later on, um, they, they're like, oh, you know, we got lucky. Or, you know, yeah, you know, we just did this whatever GIF and it just went viral. And yes, a lot is true that when you do real-time campaigns, you, you need to be lucky a little bit. But on the other hand, you also have to help your luck. Uh, because if you don't try, for example, or if you don't try certain things at certain intervals, you will simply never achieve anything. The clear advantage of real-time campaign is that the payout understood, let's say metaphorically, because the goal doesn't have to be understood uh, financially, can be very fast. And the numbers, when it comes to engagement, awareness, and so on, can be amazing. You know, Sometimes you would need months of planning, a huge budget to develop a campaign, and you would never achieve, uh, let's say, numbers, which you can sometimes achieve with real-time campaign. My goal here today is to help you prepare, as the title says, for the unexpected. So uh, there are certain things which you can do in order to prepare yourself for a moment which qualifies as something for your organization which you can use to generate a real-time campaign. You probably maybe recognize this. So if you have been, for example, following Game of Thrones, uh, in the last season, there was a scene when, which made it to the final, which made it to, to, to the episode, where someone left the Starbucks cup on the table, uh, which, as you can see, is here, and then you can see how Starbucks later on used it, just created a couple shots and created this social media post, which went absolutely viral. And there was so many other people who were playing around with this, uh, with this Starbucks cup. So here we have a, basically a very typical real-time campaign, real-time action, which is something happens, which is making a lot of people uh, well, it really depends what happens. So in this particular case, it makes a lot of people, let's say, engage in a very sarcastic way. Uh, people are making fun uh, of this situation. They are discussing it, you know, everyone is. So uh, a marketer sits and he's like, hey, that's a, you know, a lot of people is discussing it. Why don't we tap into this? So there is some, so that, you know, there is an existing, let's say, maybe not a community, but a flow of conversation where uh, a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of people is discussing something and you just generate something with the hope 
that it's going to get you uh, noticed and that more people will share it. Maybe you know that, you know, in certain moments, you know, I will not be showing, but there is certain standard ways, which we'll get to it, but I want to stay with Game of Thrones because this is, for example, another example, uh, which was done by the Polish Airlines. If you look closely, it was around when, uh, I don't know, Game of Thrones was premiering the last season or so, and everybody was like super excited about it or so. So, for example, they just released this. Uh, which uh, you can see that there is a shadow of the dragon on the, sorry, just coffee. A shadow of the dragon, which is uh, done here. So, and that, you know, that is funny, that goes viral, you know, that is uh, brand aware, that is, you know, that definitely boosts your brand awareness. Uh, it associates something with, it associates your brand with something, I don't know, cool or something. So if that is important to you, then of course you can do it this way. And of course, probably all of you, this is pro probably the most known uh, image, which is later on turned into so-called GIFs, memes or so with different, uh, with different sentences here. And if you think about it, there is a certain already, let's say a culture, a visual culture around what shows if there is something, uh, how to put it, funny happening or something which, you know, everybody's commenting. So this is one example. The other example would be, you know, there is this photo of this little baby who's doing something with his fist. The other example is the Hitler movie, which gets uh, different uh, quotes. And then there is this guy who is like, uh, uh, who is just, you know, laughing all the time. And so those are, for example, you can, those are elements which you can expect to show up, you know, when there is something happening as a commentary. Someone sits, sits down and if you go to YouTube and you go for like the, the mm, Hitler movie, you will get a lot of uh, rendered movies uh, which are relating to a certain situation to which people are trying to tap into. So those are elements, you know, which really help you. But just so you know, it's not, real-time campaigns are not always simply to be funny or to be something which is haha or in this manner. Because, well, that is one moment where we can use a huge pass. And someone, when I was asking for campaign, said, uh, making noise. Uh, <clears throat> is written campaigns are actually it's tapping into existing noise. That noise can have many different, uh, can have many different sources, which we'll discuss in a second. Basically, when we have very, well, what we are seeing is that we have this noise, this buzz, people are getting emotional, whether it's a positive emotion or a negative emotion, about something mainstream, or we see that something is mainstreamizing in terms of like, <clears throat> okay, we'll get there. And we are trying to tap into it because let's say everybody's creating a big, big wave for us, you know, and what we are trying to do is we are trying to tap into that wave because someone else is creating this for us. And uh, if we manage to succeed, steal something of it, we usually can achieve good numbers. Now, one thing is to do it once because you get lucky. The second thing is to make it maybe not a way of living, but a certain tool which is in your arsenal in case you're actually trying to, <coughs> when you advocate for a cause. So what would be the goals in terms of actually, and here you have, if you look closely, you have a, you have a list of my sub chapters. So what would be the goals in terms of, um, in terms of uh, doing a real-time campaign. I have come up with a list of such goals. So first of all, the easy one is you simply want to put attention on you, um, which can be understood as social media service, you know, boosting your brand. It's a little bit uh, connected to brand awareness. Uh, there is, of course, a difference attention doesn't not necessarily has to be put on your brand. 
It can be put on your cause, it can be put on, on whatever you are advocating for. So, um, so here basically you're grabbing attention. The second goal here is action. So we are uh, asking people to do something. That ask can be, for example, signing a petition. Uh, it can be sending a letter to a member of parliament. Uh, it can be gathering on a certain in a, certain, in a certain place. So basically, we are asking people to do something. The third element can be, the third goal can be generating traffic, if that is simply our goal. And we are like, we want to tap into this, we want to boost the traffic on our website, on our landing pages, on whatever presence we have online. Simply do it this way. Brand awareness, we already touched, it's something you know, more that we are trying to use written campaigns. Uh, to build our brand, you know, uh, a very good example, a friend of mine used to run a t-shirt shop and his whole business model was that uh, uh, he was looking for quotes, usually they were like some fun quotes from politicians and later on around it he would generate uh, a t-shirt which would well, at least the image of the T-shirt would share across social media. Some people would even buy it if that, that quote would get, you know, into, let's say, normal day language. So, but for for that shop, uh, and I'll show you more examples later on from it, hopefully, they basically, they optimize the campaign as a way to go. The goal number five can be collecting money. Um, simply, we organize a crowdfunding campaign because something is happening and we want to go a little bit further. The other two goals will be getting members. That is a very hard goal in this... Uh, in this... Uh, <coughs> I was just checking uh, <coughs> comments because my um, scroll, the scroll here went up. Uh, Claudia... Uh, oh, okay. Well, Claudia, anytime you want to ask a question, uh, feel free. So, uh, where was I? Members, uh, uh, that is of course slightly different than just getting donations, you know, we are asking people to join a certain course, usually not only to sign up somewhere, but also to pay something. The easier way is the goal number seven, which is get audience and get people to sign up for something. And I left the other because I had eight holes here and I couldn't come up with the point eight. So there is definitely some uh, other um, some other goal which you can set up for your own for your for your own organization, but basically those are goals which are covered broadly in terms of what of what can be used. And here comes the first part where we are actually trying to prepare for a return campaign. So thinking which goal is actually our goal in our head. You know, just what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to leave the phase where we are generating this funny gif you know, which goes viral, that is really cool, but that is energy, you know, which, especially if you are a cause, if you are a cause-driven organization advocating for a certain change, this is sometimes you are waiting years to, to be on that, to be on such spot, you know, this, there is a wave coming and you can really use it to achieve certain things. So, um, so just, you know, you can think what would be your goal, you know? Imagine that, okay, you can get super popular, you can get as popular as Game of Thrones. What would you use this power, you know, to achieve? What would, would, would it be just to draw attention to your message, let's say, we need to save the planet or stop coal mining? Or would you, would you be more like, please sign this petition so, because we need 50,000 people, and if that happens, you know, in our country there will be a referendum held, or, you know, we will be able to go into parliament, and they'll have to process it at least for something, or so. Or more like, this story is really important, please go uh, visit it, you know, or just, you know, like, yeah, you know, we have this amazing organization that working in this field for years, and if you could support us, you know, and donate to us in this, in this, or, you know, we are going to do something, you know, with this money for, uh, we are going to do something with this money, uh, and so on and so on. So, so that is the first step in order to prepare for the return campaign. What is your goal? Exactly. Action, as Marty says, you know, 
it is a very sometimes good moment because we will get to it. What are the moments? What, what are uh, what are the signals? Wait, where is my presentation? Here, it's here. So now phases and signs. So let's go with phases first of all because that is uh, also really important in, under, uh, in order to understand that there is a process uh, simply. I'm sorry, I just received a very good news, really good news, which I was waiting for. Uh, um, so I'll just be laughing for 10 seconds before I go back to the presentation. This is the smile where you get, uh, where you get a nice grant you were fighting for. So I'm <laughs> so like, yes, 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 yes. Okay, back. Uh, <laughs> And uh, thank you, guys. Sorry, it's just you know. I, I guess you know how it is. Everybody who, who is in this field. So uh, I have my phone far away, but it's connected to my watch, and I was like, "We got it." So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Okay, I'm done <laughs> with the session. Time to celebrate. So <laughs> I will send you the presentation. Um, okay. Um, okay. Where was I? Phases. Uh, okay. So. Now, here comes the rocket science. There is pre-campaign, there is campaign, and there is after-campaign. Now, that is, of course, uh, very valid for normal campaigns, but still the pre-campaign, of course, uh, is ca kind of works differently in this matter. But why I'm showing this? Just because, first of all, so you would understand that there is something which you have to do after campaign, which is usually to deliver something. Uh, deliver on your promise, whether you said like, oh, we will create, we will publish a book. Uh, thank you, Kasia. Um, uh, just stop reminding me about this because I have to get back here in the game. So after, why I'm starting from after? Because simply we are forgetting usually that there's life after a campaign. Why? Because the campaign itself is so fucking energetic that we are dead. Plus we are so happy that, you know, we have achieved it. Um, uh, we have achieved it, uh, uh, that we simply forget. It's like, you know, after event, kind of, you know? You're like working to prepare this event, then there is the event, and after this you're like, okay, we're dead, you know? Just let's have some beer and, you know, just go home, and next next year we will, whatever, uh, send out the uh, survey or... or, or what, no, what, what happened here? No, don't go full screen on me, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, so yes, okay, so, uh, after campaign, you know, just that, that, that's really important. Why? Because if you want to do another campaign after the first campaign, you cannot fuck up the first campaign. It's like, according, for example, to data, 90% of campaign, of people, if your first campaign failed, you have 90% chance that that is go for crowdfunding, you know? Real-time campaigns are slightly different. But just so you know, it's really hard to do a second campaign. Uh, especially, and the, the worst thing is, you know, when, let's say, you have succeeded in your campaign, but you have let your people down. So they are like, yeah, you know, we gave money to outriders, but we never saw that story. Uh, which they promised us to do. Uh, uh, oh my God, there is like a big question. Could raising awareness be one goal? Of course it can be, because we are not asking any action, but just providing info about gender-based violence in Romania, but not asking anything to the audience. What would you ask the audience in the raising awareness campaign to share this info? Well, raising... Okay, Claudia, let's do it like this. I'm going to finish phases and I'm gonna, so we don't get confused and I'm going to get into your question, okay? Just so I'm done with this part so others don't get confused. Uh, um, so, going back to uh, pre-campaign. So, pre-campaign is, of course, a time where we are trying to narrow down, we we're trying to decide, you know, okay, here is our strategy. Uh, for uh, for this year, you know, we have to gain so many signups. Let's say we said to ourselves that we will reach one million people in Romania to tell them to to raise the awareness about uh, gender violence. Was it gender-based violence? Okay. So 
And then we try to say, okay, we will do this campaign, whatever, we will just put billboards, posters everywhere or so. Fine. And then, you know, we plan the campaign and we go into, and then we plan. The real time campaign is slightly different because, well, there is almost no time for pre campaign when something happens. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is why it's, uh, we, this is why we, it's, so when we have a normal campaign, you know, we are like, we sit down, we have a couple meetings, uh, um, uh, and, you know, we plan everything, you know, day by day, we have the day by day here, it's like, oh shit, something happened, you know, and then we're like, oh, this is our moment, you know, we have a couple hours to release something and you're not ready. So, what you do? You kind of, we, we can expect that every year there's something is going to happen which will allow us to actually be helpful with a digital campaign. So we can have tools ready. We can, uh, we can have some form of strategy, you know? So we are like, you know, uh, we will wait for a politician to say something stupid, you know, that always brings, uh, brings something, uh, uh, brings something great, uh, sorry, brings something, you know, brings us opportunity, you know, or a moment. You, you can expect that every year something is going to happen. I'll give you an idea for which we are ready. I'm, I, I am from Poland. There are some people here in chat also from Poland. Our government is always, like, is warning journalists that they are going to well, change the law and uh, how to put it. Um, well, do some changes, let's say, to, 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 to the media law and to the media organization structure. Now, what it tells me that there is going to be a moment where, when, the public attention will be very much, and at least a huge chunk of public attention will be devoted to defending media, which is a great moment to organize some, form, some, some sort of campaign, boost membership, uh, have donation, so we have, I don't like imagine that here is my desk, which is actually true, and here is my drawer, and we have a campaign ready for it. Like, I'm not kidding. There is a campaign ready for this moment. Uh, it can be tomorrow, it can be in two months, I don't know, but we are ready for it. Uh, and this is a moment where it will be great to utilize it for it. So those are moments where you have your organic growth, and you can be like, oh, boom, you know, you just got the wave. Patience is, of course, a resource which no one has in enough. So this is something you know we have to we need to have. Now then, there is during the campaign. Real-time campaigns they last. They don't last long. They last maybe days, sometimes hours. So once you get the wave, you just you just ride it, you know. And after again, just get a deliver whatever. I mean, if there was a delivery point in your campaign, you gotta deliver it. It's also good to summarize it, you know, to close it up. You never know. Some, someone may come back to you in, in six months and say like, hey, Outriders, how this and that has finished for you, you know? Or like, hey, I gave you five dollars. Where is the thing you promised me, you know? You didn't send me the pen, you know, which I won. Uh, you know, whatever, uh, this can happen, you know? So those are things which you have to keep in mind. And then whatever materials, if you have anything, just like this. So. Uh, one, what is the learning here from phases? You can think about situations which would be a nice booster for you in terms of like, I, I described you in the situation from my field, you know? So the government going against media, that is a situation where people are behind the media much more often than they are, for example, during regular times, during holidays or so or so or so. COVID is an interesting moment also for media, you know, we can prove our value. There is a lot of things which we can do right now, which audience is taking, you know, around COVID and so on and so on. So you can make a list and let's say if that would be a normal workshop, you know, like that we see each other or so, I would right now ask you to split into the groups. Uh, and uh, just try to think, you know, about moments. Just you can try to think about it for your own, you know, sake for later. What are the moments which you can plan, where um, which would be very natural for your organization to organize 
a distributed campaign. Because if you can think that in, in the future, then you can actually apply a traditional model of preparing campaign for this. The only thing is that you don't have a release date, frankly speaking. You are waiting for the release date for you to have it, but you have it in your drawer and you, you are waiting for this model. So you are prepared with tools, with uh, uh, <coughs> communications, messages. You have roles divided in a team for this. So it's less, uh, how to put it, maybe stressful in a way uh, um, going further. Okay, small break, grab your coffee, not an official break, we are breaking for the cloudy question here. So, uh, of course, raising awareness can be a goal, and it is a goal for many campaigns, you know. It is especially raising awareness, it's important uh, in, how to put it, moments where, uh, where the society is not yet aware about the problem on a massive scale. So. Before we ask people to take action, we usually first raise awareness. That can be uh, both, that can be connected to each other. That doesn't necessarily has to be like this. So for example, what is it, you know, you have usually have negative things, you know, <clears throat> where you're trying to get awareness and people be beating dogs, you know. Here we have a gender-based uh, violence, so, and people are like, oh, it's like, yeah, I heard about it, but I didn't know it's a massive problem. So, uh, raising awareness, is for many campaigns one of the most important goals. Uh, I'm not asking anything is, well, raising awareness on a negative thing is usually has element of shock that in itself is uh, already a motivator to share things further uh, because people are very eager in general to share negative messaging. I think what's important for you in this particular case, Claudia, is to have the next goal. I mean, negative energy transferred into positive energy. The positive, there is always less positive energy. But you get people who can then multiply it and then you can try to go back to a certain level. Because those are people who are like, okay, we want to do something about it. You know, something more than just share it on our social media saying like, oh my fucking god, you know, this is unbelievable. This cannot be happening in Romania. And like, okay, that's it. Or change your profile picture to like, you know, I support something. That's nice, but you know, the real action here. I mean, changing your profile picture can be a raising awareness model, and many, many organizations actually use it. So I think for you, it would be really important to actually have this model. Uh, <clears throat> have this model. I mean, know what is the next thing after raising awareness. You know, when people come to you, let's say they watch movie or whatever, let's say you have a little documentary about a particular issue about your raising awareness and you're like okay you're pissed off this is what you can do donate to us and we will solve it for you or try to solve it for you call your mp or do something like this i think in general after working many years in ngos having this positive action defined is really important you of course never get as much as you want usually you get i mean there are of course moments in history where people really rally around certain cause but at the end of the day, I mean, maybe I, I simply don't like negative emotions. I mean, they're really good in terms of like channeling them to something positive. And, you know, you can build up a, a lot of you know, social movements started because, of course, uh, negative emotions or so. But the big thing and the big ask is like, do you want to be your, the whole, your whole life negative or do you have something, do you have uh, some kind of a proposal or so? So, real time campaigns, yes. Let's say you have Game of Thrones. There are, in this show, there are uh, scenes or uh, female characters who, for example, have been violently treated. So going back to my initial example, Claudia, you could tap into Game of Thrones by steering the debate into a different direction, you know? Uh, taking some of those, saying like, oh, and you know, there is a dragon and there is there is also something bad happening in the show, which can be then illustrated uh, like this. Okay, moving further, uh, science. So, we have been properly preparing for our 
social media campaign, real-time campaign, at the moment is here, you know, and there is a bomb, not by mistake here, because usually it happens, you know, you come to the office, it's 11 a.m., and then suddenly you open Twitter or something calls you, just like, you won't believe what is happening here. This is shit. What are we going to do about it, you know? Uh, and everybody gets like, no way, there's so many people infected. You know, you can see, you can feel almost the society energy which is growing, and you can steer it into a certain thing, you know, or like, or so. so what can be the possible? <laughs> I had some fun with coming. So, uh, wait, where is that? Where is my here? Okay, so there is something better negative happening. Usually, a lot of those signs are connected. You know, the more you have, usually, and some are not to be connected to each other. But just so you know, it can be there's something better negative happening. Explosion, uh, Me Too, uh, uh, simply like this, you know, it can be negative because someone said something, it can be bad because something really, I don't know. Uh, like Beirut, for example, in the explosion. I'm happy Claudia my answer was helpful. You know, it's just something like this, you know, something which really generates a lot of emotions. In this particular case, it can be negative. The other and uh, important example is something massive. Because, you know, in order to generate a massive wave, uh, it has to be massive. Uh, in order, you know. So, but massive can also be not, it, now we are jumping into something really positive. So, I would say, for example, the Game of Thrones example were kind of positive, you know, around the people getting excited about the finale or something like this. But, you know, there is a lot of real-time marketing, for example, like, I don't know, when a sports player does something, or there is a World Cup, or, I don't know, Greta Thornberg says something, you know, or something like this. So you can tap into this. The other important, uh, is something really unexpected, you know, so it can be massive, positive, and unexpected, which is a Romanian tennis player is winning Wimbledon or something like this, you know, and then everybody goes like, oh, wow, we didn't expect this, you know, and everybody gets excited and you can be like, you know, and uh, the, you can see a, a pizza shop, for example, doing for all oh, Wimbledon uh, winners, we get free kebab. You know, and then people share it because it's funny, someone released it very fast or so, and they get a lot of momentum, you know, just just because they were the first. Something kind of expected, <laughs> sorry for this. Uh, um, so, what is the difference between something unexpected and something kind of expected? Something kind of expected is what I asked you in the previous slide to do, which is to think about moments uh, which uh, which in the future, which can be those moments where your organization can use to actually do a real-time campaign. So it is kind of expected because you kind of knew it's going to happen, but you simply didn't know when it's going to happen, you know, so and so. And the sixth I just left for like, what the fuck moment, sometimes it's really like stupid. Uh, let's, let me give you an example. Two years ago in Warsaw, the whole summer, there was a situation where apparently a big python, snake, was released by someone who illegally had it. And apparently the python was 10 meters or even longer, correct me if I'm wrong, Polish people who are here. And for the whole two months, the people, especially in Warsaw, they were like, is the, where is the, the, the joke was, where is the python today? No one ever found it. Someone found its skin somewhere. Some people said they found the, its uh, trace uh, in, in the grass. Some people said they saw it uh, swimming in the river. So it was a huge what the fuck moment. But it was, um, but everyone was making, like, sorry, making fun of it. So that was, for example, a situation where you could just grab attention by doing something Python related. So that for me is a what the fuck moment, which can be both positive and negative. So what I think, what I'm trying to say with the signs, it is usually a radical moment. 
which goes, and because of that radicality, it becomes massive. And that radicality is either steered by rather very negative emotions or very positive emotions. There is nothing neutral which generates a wave needed for a return campaign. There's nothing like the sun is here 25 degrees, you know? No, that is normal. That is not giving you anything mm, like this. So uh, those are signs. Why I say signs? Because those are the moments where you can sit down and you can be like, okay, there is something going on which we can then use to uh, generate our real-time campaign. Uh, and uh, here, is for <laughs> here is an example. Um, our former, uh, by our I mean Polish, uh, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, during a conference uh, in the United Nations, he made um, a mistake. He said that he spoke with uh, president of this country, this country, and the president of San Escobar. Now, if you probably know that there is also Pablo Escobar, or was Pablo Escobar, and Narcos was a popular show back then, so that was, of course, probably an honest, <laughs> uh, how to put it, not typo, but just like, well, he just got confused. And that, of course, you can see, well, you know, we live in a GIF and meme culture, so if such a figure makes, makes such a mistake, of course, it becomes a super joke. So in Poland, that this became super massive. So, you, I mean, I just, when I was just, Googling stuff around it, I was amazed. So my friend sold a lot of T-shirts, by the way, you know, with San Escobar just on. And it was also not very popular Minister of Foreign Affairs, you know, he was later infamous for making uh, uh, such uh, mistakes. But here you can see that where is San Escobar? Uh, by the way, San Escobar uh, also has a Wikipedia page <laughs> uh, there. So he, he, we have here an example of it, you know, uh, how people jumped on it. Uh, this showed up. Uh, this is Ten Pablos, and he... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Which is a currency like this. What does it tell us, basically? Um, it tells us one thing which is very crucial, you have to be fast. Maybe not, it's, it's not the case that the first one wins, but definitely, uh, how to put it, but definitely, well, the last one doesn't win here. So your window of a reaction is very limited. Once you see the signs and you the saying like, okay, this is a moment, we see it's growing, you will be like, Okay, we have a window of a couple hours to release something. So if you were not prepared with anything before, you really have to depend on your luck, on your creativity, and on the thing that you will somewhat, uh, how to put it, you know, whatever you will do will be, I don't know, funny or creative in a way that it will basically get masses in this particular case. So this is why I'm saying, you know, is that you can actually prepare yourself for it. Even, for example, if your NGOs has, let's say, ambassadors, or it, you have, uh, you have uh, influencers with whom you cooperate, you know, even having, like, people who will multiply your message uh, established before, that is something that is greatly helpful in this particular case. So, uh, yeah. So, it's, you know, uh, and our campaign, it's like a story, uh, you know, it's just happening very fast, you know, so we have our sign, we have to find out the moment it's happening. It's going to be one huge rocket up and then a huge downfall. And uh, I'm giving you this example because it is um, basically how campaigns look like, you know, whether it's a normal campaign arranged, uh, in order to have a very good campaign, normal campaign, you actually advise to use, to, to think of a campaign as a story, 
uh, understood in free acts uh, retail campaigns are simply much faster you know inciting incident in this particular case is you know this whatever whatever situation which is no longer a sign uh, which we have and upon which we are delivering uh, mm, Mm. Uh, we just move forward with it. And then uh, for retail campaigns, because it lasts hours, maybe days, this is not how this is this is just squeezed into one thing. And then we have a resolution, which is usually the end of this year. But this is really helpful in order when it comes to planning your campaigns in general. Just you have to know that the act two here is very squeezed into one thing. I decided to leave it like this because you may want to do other campaigns. So this is always helpful to have it this way. And now I want to go back to the goals. But before I do that, I want to uh, show you two, exam two examples of our own. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, what is it? So I want to show you one campaign, one result of the campaign. This is a story called Behind the Fires, which we have done last year. Uh, probably you remember that last year a lot of there was a lot of fires in the Amazon jungle. It's not like it's not happening anymore, but it was the first time when it became such a massive thing. It's something which has really moved audience here in Poland. It is something where we have seen a lot of people starting crowdfunding campaigns in order to support some NGOs which were local. So what we have done is that we, uh, we have also create the crowdfunding campaign uh, in order to get funds to work on the story so people would understand more of why there are certain fires happening. And we have done a lot of mistakes with this campaign. So first of all, uh, and I will repeat the mistakes later on in the mistakes. So, I mean, the campaign was successful. Uh, it wasn't a big campaign. It was like a 2000 euro campaign. Just don't get me wrong here. But frankly speaking, we have made one crucial mistake is that, you know, we have, we were waiting for too long in terms of to, to have everything set, which is like, who will be the author, what will be exactly the product, uh, how many days, what is exactly the budget, you know, we really tried um, uh, stuff like this, you know, that took us two days. Uh, frankly speaking, no one really cared. From people who donated, no one really cared about it. I mean, if we would tell them, we'll make you a story, which will explain this, that would be sufficient. And uh, whereas people were like, we'll make you a story done by Gabriel, who has this experience, it will cost us this amount of money, that money will, will be spent on this. Now we have done this because we have more, we had more experience with traditional campaigns where which done in this more neutral time are um, are well simply they follow different rules than real time campaigns in real time that is a really good learn learning for us people understand that this is happening in real time so their expectations are not that high and don't get me wrong here it means that they will demand that knowledge, but not exactly in the moment when they do a campaign. Which means that you don't have to exactly know who will be the author or all the details. You can be like, we will use this money to do this, you know. You just know that there is this moment, which is like, you know, you can be like, we're pissed off with Romanian government, support us, so we will do this and that. You know, just because you know that people, what is happening? That, that, that is a moment where people simply have energy and they want to channel it to something. And people wanted to do something about the fires, you know, whether it was donate to exactly NGOs or, you know, just they, they just wanted to do something. So that is a very important, I think, learning from it, you know, that when there is a real time moment, people want to do something. 
on a deux symphoniques. Euh, 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 so, yeah. So, probably, if you would launch it 24 hours sooner, or 36 hours sooner, just because of the energy in the air, we would have fundraised much more. I, my estimate is from six to 8,000 euros. Mm, not 2,000. So that was a big learning, you know, which I want to say, you know, that a uh, lot can be prepared, but if you find yourself in a situation like this, one thing is very important, you have to be clear on your de de deliverable, like, you know, in a graph, kind of. Uh, but you don't have to be clear exactly about the process. The process can be figured out later on. Uh, anyhow, we have, up, after this, we have started to fundraise for more stories like this. Frankly, we do it right now quite often. It's our tool of getting extra budget for a story. Uh, <clears throat> whenever there is something happening more on a massive level, we do a micro campaign, as we call them. Usually, we ask around $1,000, $1,500. That is something, something extra budget added to a story for which we kind of already have the budget anyhow. It's just, you know, adding different components, you know, we can do something extra with it, you know, we maybe spend more days in the field. People also like the idea that we already have some budget secured for it, and so on and so on. So, this is, <clears throat> after this learning, sorry, I mean, I have been sick recently, <clears throat> and uh, it's in, I haven't talked for so long in a while, but anyhow, I'm almost done. So, um, going forward, um, what I wanted to say was that before I coughed was that basically in this particular case, this around thousand euros, we have just made a simple tool uh, for us, you know, which we kind of know how to do, how to roll out, and you know, just move further with it and later on. Uh, one of the things which I will share with you, because just so you know, for this small campaigns, we use Facebook donations. We actually ha have a theme how to describe it. So it doesn't have to be long in terms of like 10 pages. It's three quarter page, like this is outriders, this is what we will do, this is what you will get. Very short, three, four paragraphs. And for this, we start to fundraise, you know, and it just rolls like this. Uh, another thing which I wanted to show you was a love speech campaign. I, I during the opening, there was, I caught a little bit of it and there was some, talk about hate speech. Uh, that was a campaign which was invented after the mayor of Dansk was uh, killed. Um, two years ago almost. Yes, two years ago almost. Uh, <laughs> it's called love speech. So I guess you are familiar with hate speech. Uh, so love speech was invented as a visual language for people to debate certain things, especially, for example, for Instagram or so. So if you go to your Instagram and you Google love speech, you will find our GIFs. Uh, here they are. Some of them are uh, were developed real time. Uh, this is my pressure, so let's stay home. This is a GIF, of course, related to isolation or so. Here is a GIF, where is it? We don't have it in English version. Oh. Let me then switch to Polish. Okay. So here is when all that the captured won a Nobel Peace Prize last year. Um, and that became a really viral gift used by people. Now, we use those gifts, they are actually custom, like they are written, they are not written, but drawn by us. And we sometimes generate them when you know, there is something happening, and we actually use gifts a lot in our own language. Uh, just uh, let me show you this. Because I'm really, I'm really like, proud of, uh, up until now, our gifts have been seen 14 million times. So we think of a GIF as a platform. Those are different GIFs. For example, this this, this, this is uh, one of the also very popular one. 
where you can see proper, flirty, provocative. You know, so, uh, that was a cover of a magazine because a lot of our covers, as you can see, are also developed in, as GIFs. But then you have this, and people can easily add them to their Instagram feeds, uh, Facebook feeds. You can drop them in your WhatsApp or Messenger conversations or so. So we, we think of Giphy as a platform. You can actually register and verify your account on Giphy. Uh, you need five GIFs to upload it for this. And late after you get verified, if I Google, uh, let's say, Francesco, uh, because Francesco is a keyword on Giphy, you will be able to find them like on your mobile phone on every basically social media platform, which, uh, which, uh, yeah, 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 it's free of charge to use them. You can, if you go to your Instagram and you'll be like, oh, hey, uh, uh, this is outsiders, you can just use them, you know? So, uh, yes, Claudia, it's free of charge. So you can generate this for you. So we think of this as a platform and uh, uh, that was the idea here, how to channel negative energy, you know? Whenever people are pissed off because something happens around hate speech, we just remind that there is love speech, and we ask people to give us ideas for gifts. The whole idea of love speech is to create a language through which we are able to discuss polarizing topics. But the, the, the layer of understanding is simply um, is simply uh, that it has to be you know respectful. So, in order to summarize almost my talk, and before I open the questions, I don't know how Magda is doing with, with her writing. I just want to go one more time through the goals. But just think about... Uh, wait. Where is here? Okay, goals. So, we also have mistakes, which is very important. So, <clears throat> When you want to grab attention, you should launch super fast. Um, in terms of like, you know, when, when, when a situation occurs, usually you should do it through a... Uh, it's going to be rather a GIF or a meme-like uh, tool. Uh, 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 yes, Uzina uh, Duzina Association. I'm dropping you easygift.com. That is my favorite tool to create gifts. Uh, so that is something where you just want to grab attention. You know, you create a photo, you drop it on your social media, and you see if it happens. The good thing about it is that you can fail here. You know, it's not like you just announce that you are gathering one million dollars. You are just basically dropping an image to Twitter or maybe a Facebook page, and you're like, you wait ten minutes, and you're like, it didn't went viral. No, well, okay, maybe next time. It really depends on the idea, you know? That's why I put an idea here, whether you... I can hear someone's voice, I'm not sure who's. Magda, you, I will mute you, okay. Uh, okay, so when it comes to action, uh, what you can have before? Some kind of a landing page, a petition page, uh, and you need a clear goal, you know, here, the fund when you launch, which is like, we are gathering 10,000 signatures. For example, they click from Romania. They usually start their own uh, campaigns with the petition. Because, for example, when you have a certain amount of people who sign petition, you can go to media and say, like, hey, we have this news, 10,000 people signed the petition, so that, you know, all dogs have to wear pink shirts in uh, Pupadas, you know? And they're like, oh, okay. And according to the law, at least uh, there has to be one session of parliament around it, you know, because that's how it is. What you get, you get some kind of sign-ups, you know, signatures around it or so. But here you convert action into something, you know. It can be also call your member of parliament, stuff like this, if you need it this way or so. So, yeah. traffic. Uh, traffic is, you know, for example, you have your stories or you prepare a story. You, you, for example, you may have an explainer journalism story or you know, you're like, how to test for COVID, and you, stuff like this, uh, which you can write before, 
which is not a time related exactly piece. So it is not a use piece, but something basically something which you can have ready before. It can be also your content which you have already published some time ago and you just want to reuse it at a certain time. So you can just do it like this. What you get is uh, website visits. Brand awareness, well, that is going to be usable in social media and you just launch with some good visual, you know, you have like this Oreo or stuff like this. I see a lot of uh, companies which try to, IKEA is uh, probably by, you have seen IKEA written campaigns. Uh, they are actually quite often using this. Uh, you get social media shares. Now money, that is something if you really, if you want to, Probably the most important part is like if you really want to use this written campaigns to collect money, there is something which you have to uh, be ready for, which is like uh, have a page where people can give you money. You sometimes you need to verify on certain platforms, you know, stuff like this. So this can take some time, depending on what kind of a platform you are using. So that is highly important that uh, you take care of it before you do anything, because usually. Is that there is nothing you can do like to get verification, whatever, talk to Visa, MasterCard, if you want to get this, you know, get a badge because you need to send your registration documents. That takes days sometimes, even if it's fast. But that means that your campaign is done by this time. I mean, it wasn't even started. So if you want to ask money, make sure that you have this already prepared. And for example, you know how much you'll be asking. Members, of course, you need before a membership platform, uh, you know, uh, you can also discuss here promotion or a discount because it can be a funny discount. So basically something which you already have in mind, you know, something which is more in line with your strategy, you get signups. Audience, I actually really like it uh, because one thing is to collect money, but the other thing is you can say like, for example, uh, I don't know, there's something connected to climate crisis. And you're like, okay, if we get 10,000 signups, we will launch a dedicated newsletter to, to this issue. So I like this because it takes off the pressure of not having enough people to, come to do it. Uh, it, it. It pushes people to actually engage around it. And for you, you get a nice amount of people and emails as your audience. So don't just think that, you know, your goal has to be like, oh, just subscribe here, and then you know you have ten people, and you're like, oh shit, you know, we we promised to do them a daily YouTube show, and we only had we have ten viewers. Be like, no, we need ten thousand because people also understand that certain things, in order to be successful, they have to be viable for you in terms of like. So you will, of course, not be printing a whole magazine for twenty people, you know. So you can also help yourself with it. Okay. My last thing for you is mystics. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, those two points here, access to individual consultation, that is something from a different presentation, so forget about it, but mistakes before. By before, I mean, you know, just like before you launch something, but uh, or already where we are in this campaign, real time zone, you know, so not like two months before, but let's say three hours before. Too much thinking is definitely something that kills a lot of campaigns. Uh, or let's say narrows down their success, you know? And on, the, on, on one hand, you have to, and I know that you have to think about the creative part, visual or so, but you have to time yourself. You have to give yourself three hours and just launch with it. Because if, you know, the time is running out and key part of success is to time it more or less okay. Uh, when it's growing, not too soon, not too late. How to measure this? I cannot tell you. Here you have to tie on your own. It's not prepare for the unexpected. You know, I can, there is no exact recipe for a successful return campaign. What I'm giving you right now is basically all my experience, which you can do to help yourself be successful. The other thing is uh, to complicated ask. So we don't ask people for five dollars email, call member of parliament, share this, and do this. No, we don't have the whole thing. You have to decide 
what, what you think. Like, we are raising awareness about this issue. Please share. We are making a story about this issue. Please donate. We are trying to launch a magazine. Please sign up now. You know, if there is 10,000 people who will prove us that they want news about this issue, we will launch it. It has to be simple, super simple, if you're asking for anything. Of course, because if you are just asking for like, if you are just wanted to be funny in terms of like, hey, share this job, that's that, that's an easy ask for it. What is the mistake? What, what what can go wrong when the campaign is happening? So first of all, there can be competition. So you can see that there is a lot of different organizations trying to tap into this. So you know there is a lot of Polish airlines, Game of Thrones. There is this local grocery. There is this NGO. There is you. So. You have to be ready that if there is such moment, you may not be the only. Uh, you may not be the only. How to put it? Like an organization which has to. Work. The other issue, which is quite common, uh, is that whatever you develop, especially if you are aiming for the funny thing, is that you know it's not funny, or it's even awkward. You know, it's like you know, it's like oh yeah. Okay. We thought it's a nice joke, but you know, with jokes it's not easy to invent them. You know, what I mean, so that may happen to you. It's simply that you know you'll be like people will look at it and be like, yeah, yeah, it's not funny. It can be like, yeah, it's not funny, or it can be like, yeah, it's not funny. It's just you know, the negative way. Changing the ask. Well, you don't change the ask, but as you know, that is the, your time window is very short. You just go. That's it whatever to the end. And you do not abandon the campaign, you know? I mean, once you started it, you should finish it. You know, abandoning campaign, if it's constructed in a way that, I don't know, you're collecting a certain amount of money or so, or you promise something, you, that, that's connected to after, which is delivering on, the pro, on the, delivering on the promise, you know? One of the biggest mistakes in general campaigns is wrongly defining goal, and uh, the promise, because you, for example, you don't know that your promise is too heavy on you, because you're like, if you give us ten dollars, we will send you a printed version of our magazine, uh, uh, free sushi, two whoppers, and everything, and you are actually losing. On your, on the, you have to add twenty dollars more. So stuff like this, you know, uh, which is in this particular case, uh, which is in this particular case. Uh, uh, which is in this particular case, uh, what I wanted to say, I lost my thought. Where was I? Delivering on the promise. Yes. So uh, just think about it. Like think about your campaign from the end, not from the start. Think always think about them from the end. Which is like what you what, what are you getting, and how you first wh where do you want to go, and then on the road. I know, I know, I'm finishing, Francesca. I'm sorry. Uh, so, to finish it, the, mo the, the most important part in this campaign is to clearly tell people why are you doing certain things. You don't have to be focused on what and why, especially in real-time campaigns, how and what I mean. This will come later on. So don't really focus. Uh, I'm keeping track of the time. Yes, this is basically my last slide, I think. Just so you just know, you know. Uh, uh, so, you know, we are the organization from Poland. We are fighting for to save the planet. Help us do it, you know. Uh, and in real time, people are really not that focused on the process. You can think about it later on as you go. And what you can do tomorrow, uh, so just to, as a first step to our real time campaigns, is to I want to go back to those two elements. One is think about the moments uh, in the future which you could use as a real time as a real time campaign opportunity. And the second thing is think about the moments in the past, which already have, you know, because they happened, which is like, oh, that was a really good moment, which we could have used to boost our things. And I think the easy thing for you to do is to create some kind of a landing page where, for example, you would ask people just to give you emails, you know, because they would like to know more about your work. So not asking about my, not asking about like raising awareness, but like trying to tap into this by just enlarging your audience. And that was it from my side. I Yes, that's it from my side. We have still 10 more minutes. Francesco, you may jump in and 
you know, ask some questions or do whatever you, you want to. For me, this is it. As I said, this presentation will be sent to you. Also, as a link to view, if you would have any questions, they would be in my email, so you can always contact me. Yeah, I can be happy to answer you, especially once you will be developing your own written campaigns. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jakob. Uh, your contribution was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and congratulations, by the way, <laughs> for your grant. Yeah, sorry for this, but you know, it's just like... <laughs> yeah, it was very fun. Actually, I, I feel very empathic <laughs> because I have an history of uh, uh, waiting for, uh, for grants approval, mm -hmm. so I know how it feels, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. So I would open now the, the floor. We have like 10 minutes, uh, more or less. So if people want to ask any question via chat or sharing their audio and video and jump into the, the conversation, just feel free. We have a question from Claudia or maybe just a comment. No, we have a question. So what's happening around the world or what's moving the people for not losing? Like, do you Google? <laughs> to be honest, I rely a lot on my um, How to put it? Well, I observe media, you know, because that's my work. I'm actually a, I run a media organization, so we are very much connected to what is happening. Um, so, you know, we just wait for the moments, you know, whether it's trends on social media, you know, you can see on Twitter what is happening. In some particular case, we have a tool which tracks for us, you know, we can, um, it's called Brand24, and we use it basically to observe social media conversation, whether it's growing or not. But, uh, we are, frankly speaking, usually waiting for a more mainstream drama. So not like a, a social media drama, but more like something connected to politics or to politicians or to some bigger issue happening, which is already covered by mainstream media. So I think the good example here is the Amazonas fires in this particular case. That is something which was massively covered by mainstream media. It was something where politicians were saying something and where we have seen a lot of social media action done by just people. As, uh, you know, so that is a moment where you know, okay, the wave is really big. Uh, so yeah. Thanks, thanks to Claudia for being very active during this uh, uh, during this session. And mm -hmm. I wanted just to uh, make a small reminder while we are waiting for other people to ask any question if they want. Uh, they're in the polls area mm -hmm. on the right. You can evaluate. Uh, uh, give a feedback and rate the uh, keynote uh, uh, speech from Erin uh, from this morning. We will launch uh, shortly also another uh, another evaluation uh, poll uh, also for this session. So feel free uh, to to rate this session if you want to. And also here for whoever is here, I'm going to uh, post on the chat. Another form that it's open. Uh, it's an evaluation form for the ongoing uh, uh, for the ongoing evaluation of the camp. So you can just feel free to go there and leave any feedback, comment about a specific session, but also in general about the event. And you can do this uh, at any time during the during the camp. So just save it maybe, and during these four days, go there uh, time by time when you feel like sharing any thought or feedback or comments. So if you have any other uh, question for Jakob, just feel free to ask. Okay, well then, uh, there's some more questions. I will not be keeping you and like, oh, you need permission, you need permission. Yes, okay, yes, guys. I read. So uh, I will not be keeping you any longer. Enjoy the rest of your event. Uh, thank you very much to the organizers, Naomi and Francesco and Aaron, who is not here, uh, for allowing me to be with you. Uh, Kian, I'm really happy that this session was useful to you. There is my email up front. Uh, Uzina Duzina Association, also thank you very much. Bye-bye, take care.